Hello everyone, my name is Becky Durst and I will be your moderator for tonight. Roseanne is going to get us started tonight with our bug watch. This week we're featuring the assassin bug. These are amazing beneficial insects that I'm always happy to see. Well, thanks Becky. Yeah, I'm, I was excited about this bug. Um, you know, it has kind of a scary name, but it is in fact a very beneficial insect predator for our gardens. There's about 160 species of these in North America and about 50 in Virginia alone, so that was kind of cool. And many are found, commonly found around our house, such as the wheel bug, the Aramis costasis. These assassin bugs essentially have a three stage life cycle, similar to a lot of the bugs we've discussed. You have the egg, the nymph, and the adult. And the adult stage is the one that overwinters. So they grow to about mm, one, one and a half inches or so, and they usually have only one generation per year. If you are someone who inspects your plants for pests, you can distinguish the eggs of the assassin bug, which are grouped in this hexagon form, as you see in the lower picture there. And they look similar to little wine flasks with a fancy stopper. So on the, on the plant surface, kind of a cute description of them. Thankfully, we don't have the kissing bug group of this, which is found in Mexico, Central America, and South America because it comes out at night and feeds on human and animal blood. It's like, oh, oh, we don't want that. For conservation, the assassin bugs are encouraged because they are a biological pest control. So they're very effective components for your integrated pest management. Okay, and they can help contribute immensely to pest population control when there's a, they're found in abundance. They actively hunt prey on various types of vegetation such as trees and weeds and bushes and gardens. Uh, the prey can include a variety of caterpillars, such as gypsy moths, eastern tent caterpillars, uh, fall webworms that we're seeing, also the soft fly larva, aphids, which we have a lot of, and beetles and their larva, and such as the pesky Japanese beetles we have to deal with. Unfortunately, uh, the assassin bugs themselves are prey for birds, rodents, spiders and even other assassin bugs, particularly when they're in that nymph stage. Some of the species are generalized and will only eat a variety of insects, while others are specialized, so they only prey on one type of insect. These can be considered pests at times, but only when they bite humans. So it's not recommended to handle them. I don't know how many people want to go out and play with them, but they may be cute, but they're just not cuddly. Uh, the pain is caused by their toxic saliva, which is injected to immobilize and digest the internal organs of their prey. So I found that kind of interesting in my research. So how do we encourage these wonderful insects to help in our garden? Well, first consider growing flowers and plants in your garden can attract a variety of insects. You know, avoid any broad spectrum insecticides if you're going to use them. If you're going to be using them, be sure to read all the information to be sure you aren't killing off the good beneficial insects along with the pesky ones. Unfortunately, unlike other beneficial stuff we've talked about, such as the green lace wing, assassin, assassin bugs are not available commercially. So we have to encourage them with our gardening practices. So here are some of the resources I use. Um, definitely a bug to look up and read about because it was a lot of fun. Thank you. I need to uh, draw some of these in for the soft fly larvae that have decimated my hibiscus and my creeping jenny. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Roseanne.